questions? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Jerome. Yeah. All right, so good evening to all of our parents. Welcome in to our staff. Uh, we have our PTA president, uh, Ms. Moss here. So before I get started, um, if you would like to come off mute and just greet us, um, I'll give you the floor. Thank you for being here. Let me... There you go. <laughs> good evening. Thank you guys for having me. Um, good evening, parents. I am your PTA president, Miss Moss. Um, my son is in eighth grade, um, and he's leaving soon. But I just wanted to be here, um, just to, just to be here for you guys. Um, so I hope all is well. Hope everyone's having a great evening. And go ahead, Miss Harris, do your thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. So families, uh, parents and guardians, if you wouldn't mind, if you have not already, please drop your child's name in the chat, first and last name, and the sixth grade class that they are in. Thank you. You can go to the next slide. All right. So Mr. Bailey and I, thought it would be a great idea just to really talk with all of our sixth grade parents. Um, this will be a brief meeting, but we thought it was important to set the tone of the meeting. Why are you here? Um, and then what are the supports uh, that we are providing for your child or children? And how can you support students as we support both parents and students at home? And then we want to take some questions. Thank you. All right, so when we're thinking about why we wanted to meet with you, um, we wanted you to know um, in service of the mission and vision of Village Academy that we want all of our students to leave us reading, um, writing and performing mathematically on grade level or beyond. Uh, we want all of our students to make progress each year. And so when we think about our motto, um, it is not just words, around placing students on the path to success. We walk every student along this path. And so we wanna make sure um, that our students are really not only on that path for sixth grade, but we're looking ahead beyond high school to college and career. Uh, we want our students to work hard while they're here with us and when they leave us, and we want our families um, to help their children to take full advantage of all of the programs um, that we're offering. And then we also want to support you. And so this is the purpose of this very important meeting. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we appreciate you. I'm gonna cross it over to Mr. Bailey. All right, um, thank you families for joining. Um, you could be anywhere, but you're here with us and we're super grateful for that. So as uh, Ms. Harris said, the goal is for 100%. We want virtually all of our students making progress each and every year, all right? Um, so, so far, our sixth graders, we know they come from different schools, um, you know, but we still have the same expectations for them. So right now, it shows that many of our students have not mastered their basic operations. So that's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It is super important for our students to master those skills to be successful in sixth grade. And as you know, if they're successful in sixth grade, it catapults them in the seventh and eighth grade to be successful as well. Again, making sure that all of our students leave us in eighth grade on and above grade level. So as we may not know or may know, the students do not get to use a calculator on the state exam for day one. That is 65% of the exam. So it's very important that our students can fluently add, subtract, multiply, and divide so that they can be able to access these problems. We notice when we give students a calculator, they have good critical thinking skills. However, there is a gap in some of our students' fluency, and we want to address that. We're addressing it in school, but we also have programs to address it outside of school. And we also see that the data shows that our students need support with vocabulary, with reading fluency, and with comprehension, all right? So we know that the sixth grade scores align directly to ninth grade performance and how students perform 
in high school, in college, and beyond, all right? Um, we do know, all right, that it's not just about the state exam, but it is about student success and how students perform in middle school is an indicator on how they will perform in high school and how, you know, it's about the high schools they get into, it's about the colleges they get into, and it's about making opportunities for our children. So as we see here, um, according to this data last year, um, when our students were in fifth grade, it looks like 40% of them were proficient in ELA and 35% of them were proficient in math, okay? So I believe the city average is somewhere around 51%, but we have a goal this year um, to, to outperform the city. Um, I, like we said, by eighth grade, we want 100% of our students to be proficient. And to be proficient just means that you're reading and performing in math on or above grade level, all right? So our goal is for our reading, our ELA, to hit 65% of our students that are on grade level or above grade level. And for math, our goal is to hit 60%. It is an ambitious goal, but we can do anything um, as long as we put our minds to it and as long as we stay committed and dedicated to these goals. Ms. Harris? Excuse me. So here on this slide, we have an overview of our school programs and the supports that are in place. And so Mr. Bailey and I will take turns talking about each of these. So I'm going to talk first about Amira. All right. So Amira is a new learning tool that we launched last week, and it helps students become better readers. And it does that in two ways. So it assesses our students and gives us real-time information about what skills students need and what they're ready to learn next. So parents, if you think back with me to elementary school was, was just a few months ago, and many of the elementary school teachers were trained in running records, this is what's happening with Amira. She is artificial intelligence, and she is taking the place of the teacher in a way that is really beneficial and supports and rounds out what's happening in the classroom. Um, the second way is that Amira listens to students read aloud, so that fluency part uh, that we talked about earlier, so that they're going to listen to themselves, they're going to learn how to pronounce words, cite words, um, high frequency words is what we call them, and then continue to practice um, so that they can improve. And so when we share um, on the next slide, we have a video. We're not going to show this this evening, but we are going to upload the slides to our website. So you're going to have access. But what's important here is that students are logging into their nycstudents.net accounts um, throughout the week, at least three times a week for 10 minutes. Um, and they have already begun working on this in school last week. So they are very familiar. And so they're gonna follow the prompts to Amira um, so that they can practice at home. And then they have two days a week in class where they're working with their sixth grade humanities teachers um, to also practice as well, okay. All right, so the next program is Extra Math. So I know everyone has been getting the Kinvo messages that go out every single day, I believe at five o'clock. Make sure you check in with your child to make sure that they completed their Extra Math. So we have been starting, we have started, excuse me, Extra Math since September. It is an online uh, fact fluency program. So it helps the kids really base, uh, develop those basic math facts that I was talking about earlier, right? So as we know, kids need to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with fluency, all right? And this program helps them identify where they are and, and it helps them practice each and every day. It only takes about 10 minutes of course, they can do more than 10 minutes every single day, but we know that when students are strong in the, those basic skills, that when they get to the advanced math, when they get to seventh grade, when they get to fractions, when they get to algebra, they become way more confident and it becomes a lot more easier for them. And we also want to say that um, so far, um, only 11 students, right, out of the entire sixth grade have mastered their four operations. And we noticed that at one point students were on every day, 
but that engagement online has kind of faltered, right? So we want to show you in this meeting right now how easy it is to log into Extra Math. We're gonna be sharing with you a document that has your child's information as far as their login information for iReady, for Extra Math, um, so forth and so on, and all the programs we're using so that you have access to that. If you don't have your child's PIN, you can just simply reply to that message that we send every single day. And I will hopefully get back to you within the day, but definitely within 24 hours, I will be able to get back with you with that PIN number um, so you can log in. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how easy it is. So I can't, I guess I can't. <laughs> Hold on one moment, guys. All right, let's try again. All right, so I am, there we go. I'm going to go to extra with an X math, right? And it pops right up, 10 minutes a day. So you can go to student, um, but I'm going to go to the main page here and show you on the right-hand side, you just sign in. All right, so there are different options here, right? Um, you want the child to sign in as a student, okay? And then I'm going to act like I'm not already here. So I'm going to go to other, and this is what you will see. If you've never signed in or your child never signed in on that device, this is what you'll see. Uh, we'll send out the directions, and we have a video showing you this, but we wanted to show everyone live. So the email, you have to, you can't log in with Google. You can't log in with Clever or Classlink. You have to use the teacher's email. So the teacher's email is 6math1 at banyc.org, right? You have to put your child's first name. So I'm going to put mine's Bailey. And then each student has a four-digit pin that they should have memorized by now. Again, if you don't have the pin, you can just uh, send me a message asking me for the pin, or you can message your child's teacher. So mine's is 2468, all right? So I'm going to sign in. And I am in extra math. All right. So. All right. So when students start, they get a little quiz. That quiz is going to tell them where they are and they're going to get an opportunity to practice. Again, they can do more than 10 minutes each and every day but they need to do at least. And we have a special incentive trip. We're gonna be taking our students to Laser Bounce, all the students who master all four operations before February break. So we will be checking. If you have any questions about that, definitely, definitely message us. And we do uh, want to celebrate those students really quickly. So if you have a child whose name is on this list, be very, very excited. They will be going to Laser Bounce. <laughs> I saw some celebrations going on. All right, so if your child is not on this list, then they need to continue to work towards mastering all four operations. All right, so the next program we wanna talk about is iReady. So iReady is a program that assesses our students' levels in math and reading three times a year. So first in the fall, then in the winter, and then in the spring, all right? So once the students complete their diagnostic, what's interesting and wonderful about iReady is each student gets an individualized path, right? So whatever they need, they're going to get based on their performance on iReady, all right? So the biggest thing here, if students use iReady consistently, they do better on exams. They make academic progress. If they are not using iReady, they will not make as much progress as they normally would have. So this is a missed opportunity because we're currently seeing a lot of our students are not utilizing iReady to the, the subscription, which is two completed lessons in reading each week and two completed lessons in math each week. So we're going to tell you how you can support from home, but we really, really want to stress it's super important that students are completing their iReady. And students just finished their mid-year diagnostic, so we will be sending those family reports home. And just so you know, we just wanted to go over a report very quickly so you know what's going on, all right? So here's an example of a family report. So this section on the left is bar that says test, and the date here, this is an example of where they first tested. And the second bar tells you whether or not they went up or down and by how many points. 
underneath the bar, it will tell you the grade level that they're currently on, right? So, you know, sometimes students come home and say, hey, I had a 425. We don't know what that means in a scale score, right? So what does that mean? When you go to the IRD report, you'll be able to see whether or not they're on grade level, they're one grade below, or two or more grade levels below. So you know exactly where your child is performing, all right? So, iReady is largely done at home, but there are different opportunities for students to do iReady, okay? So, by now, all students should have received technology. Either they receive technology from their former schools or they receive technology from us, all right? If you did not receive technology, it's super important at this time, please put that in the chat. Um, Ms. Cooper will be looking at that to make sure that we are that we have uh, technology in every home for all students, all right? Now, if your technology was broken, it needs to be repaired, the screen was cracked, okay? There is a time frame um, where we have to actually get those repaired. Someone actually comes out and swaps them out or repairs them, and that may take a couple of months, right? So we do have another opportunity for students to complete iReady throughout the day, all right? So we have lunch groups and we have after-school groups as well. And I'm going to kick it over to Ms. Harris. Thanks, Mr. Bailey. So next up, we have Reread VA. So you have seen several messages uh, most recently about our independent reading program. And so we're really excited about this because this reading program actually correlates to a million words. And so students and adults who know a, a million words, have read a million words, have a rich vocabulary. And so passing tests being college and career ready um, is right in their grasp. They are ready to go. And so there's also information and research that's been done to track folks in their careers and how much vocabulary that they know. So to support our students in school, they have advisory twice a week. One of their advisory periods, um, they kick off reading their book that we provided or that they selected from the classroom library or our school library, and they read for 20 minutes. We're also asking that Monday through Friday that you support us and support your child or children in reading 10 to 20 minutes at home, um, their novels, and then over 450 um, pages counts for two books. And then students who are um, at home on Saturdays and Sundays that they read 45 to 60 minutes and that they're also completing their book journals. There are two due each week. Um, and then their book projects, they have to select twice a month also at home. And so we're looking at comprehension. They can read to you, they can read to siblings, you can read together, but this is going to also help force their comprehension and allow them to read vocabulary in context. So we're really excited about this program um, and they get to read a variety of books. And we also have our librarian who's supporting um, the public library here, right? So then we also are working on issuing library cards for our young people as well. So please um, let us know if that's something you're interested in as well. Thank you. Next slide, Mr. Bailey. All right, so next we have mandatory after school tutoring. And so all of our students, um, based on their data, received permission slips prior to winter break. And so they were selected based on their performance in both math and or humanities. And so please, please, please ensure that they're staying for after school. We're using research-based programs such as TransMath, Rewards and Starry. These are reading intervention programs. And we just want to really re-emphasize that the time that they're spending in after school um, with their teachers in a small group setting translates to improved classroom performance and higher reading and math proficiency levels, which we are looking again forward to high school and then college and career. And we also wanted to share in this space um, that your child will be considered promotion in doubt if they do not attend mandatory after school. Okay, next slide. All right, so, excuse me, my light went out. So if 
you are a parent um, of a child or children um, that were not mandated to attend after school, but you would like your child to attend, you can contact our PAC coordinator, Ms. Cooper, or your child's math or humanities teacher for a permission slip. And so we're gonna put in the chat in just a few minutes, our Village Academy teacher contact information. I'm gonna drop that into the chat so you have that information on hand and you can download it to your device at this time, all right? And so now I want to keep it moving. We're gonna talk about how our parents can continue to partner with us. Thanks, Mr. Bailey. So looking at this slide, there's a lot of information. And so we just want to drive home uh, the point that in order, I saw a question in the chat earlier, how could I know if my child um, is completing the work that they said that they did? Literally have them show you their device. They either have a Chromebook or an iPad and you can literally have them show you the completed lessons for math, that's two, and then the two completed lessons in reading each week. For Amira, you can literally stand over um, your child and you can see them log on. Sometimes students have trouble getting into Amira because they're going to the wrong app. So you can also, I saw a question about that in the chat, oops, and then we can, okay, we can um, also assist that way so they can see me, I'm in room 364 or their teacher. They can also, and also should be logging in. We heard Mr. Bailey talk to us and show us how to get into extra math. So that's 10 minutes a day. So if any sixth grader comes home to say, mom, dad, grandma, auntie, I do not have homework. That is not true. Um, also for the independent reading, um, as well as the book projects and journals, um, every parent or guardian received an invitation to their humanities teacher's Google Classroom. Same thing for math. So please check your emails, um, click the link to join, and then you will literally be able to see what work that they have completed as well as the grades. Please ask your child about the book or books that they're reading. So it's three for December, three for January. Um, quiz your child about their math facts periodically. Make a game um, around that. Check your child's Google Classroom for any missing assignments and then reach out um, to teachers and students. Um, and then checking Google Classroom for instructional videos and supports for teachers and then um, community just communicating any um, concerns that you have just as you're doing. So just for clarity around Amira, um, and we can take it offline um, outside of this meeting, um, any students that um, are currently scored for their mid-year um, received a score below seventh grade reading um, have been opted into Amira. So you can um, check in with myself or, and or your child's humanities teachers, and then we can clarify. Also for um, humanities, they have homework from the reading lesson, the ELA lesson, um, also uploaded to Google Classroom, and then they receive a math packet. Um, and so Mr. Bailey can talk more about that in terms of homework, okay? Thanks, Mr. Bailey. You can hit the next slide. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm messaging <laughs> parents. They, they want to know um, if their child is mandated. So I was trying to toggle between two. Things. I saw you. <laughs> Thanks, Bailey. All, All right. right. Mm -hmm. and so so this we is have just a sample, uh, just a sample schedule uh, for the week. Um, you know, you don't have to um, go by this schedule, but this is pretty much how you can kind of, um, you know, map out the time uh, for your child to complete um, you know, all of these programs and to make sure that they're um, on track for promotion and, and making progress. And we'll definitely share the slides out. This recording will also be posted on our website and on our YouTube channel. All right. So an important thing is you want to make sure that, um, you know, we're, we're helping kids budget their time. You know, it's super important to be successful as a person, as a professional, um, you know, to manage your time effectively. 
Um, so really and truthfully, it is a lot. We do have high expectations, but the students have the time to complete the work, okay? Um, you know, there's additional time to complete assignments at home, um, but there's also additional time throughout the day. Um, you know, students can definitely, uh, while they're here for breakfast at 7.30, we have students that are completing it already while they are sitting, um, while they're sitting at the cafeteria table, right? We have students that are on their iPads during lunch. Uh, we have students that are here during lunch up in the classrooms with the teachers uh, during their lunch support, right? So there are so many opportunities throughout the day, um, as well as at home for students. And we wanna make sure that we're helping them effectively manage their time so that they can make sure that, you know, we're closing the gap and we're reaching the goal of all of our students, right? Not just some, not a few, but we want 100% of our students on and above grade level because that is the goal. And this is how you can contact us. So uh, myself and Ms. Harris, here is our email and the school number with our extensions. And also in the chat, we will have the uh, teacher contact information. It's gonna have the email address of every teacher, um, you know, by subject as well. So, you know, hey, who's your math teacher? Um, if it's Ms. Jadon, Ms. Jadon's email is there. So if you have a question, you can definitely reach out to Ms. Jadon or any of the teachers we have um, via email. And that concludes our presentation. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. And at this time, if there are any questions about anything you've heard about in the last half an hour, um, you can raise your hand and Ms. Cooper can unmute you to ask your question or you can place your question in the chat. <laughs> 